Hello and welcome to another Impact Insights. I'm delighted to have with me today Steve Seal, who is Managing Director of Bluestone Mortgages. Hi Steve. Hi Dale. Thank you for your time today, appreciate it. Um, the last few weeks, months have been challenging for all of us. Um, how have you found it? What have you been doing your side? What have your challenges been? Yes, it has definitely been challenging. Um, so firstly Dale, thanks for the opportunity to kind of come and join you this afternoon and, and, and talk to you and, and, and your brokers. Um, so yeah, I think since, uh, if we cast, cast our mind back to March when COVID-19 uh, started to influence uh, the UK economy and the financial services industry within the within the UK, it has definitely been a challenging period. Um, I'm not sure whether you know, Dale, but we we were in a period of change within Bluestone at that point where we were moving from our, from our offices um, in Melbourne House in, in the centre of London and moving into brand new offices. And actually, we, we, moved, we made that change two days prior to when we had to send everybody to work from home. Wow. So deploying people to work from home uh, effectively overnight is quite a challenge for any business. Doing it when you have your worldly belongings in crates and everything is upside down and back to front and uh, we haven't quite settled into our new home yet, it was, it was an even bigger challenge. Um, but I'm pleased to say that we managed to deliver that. Um, and yeah, from, from that point, um, it's been a fascinating, fascinating period. So challenges ranging from clearly the uh, deployment of the forbearance measures that the regulator introduced to support customers who were being impacted by COVID-19. Um, a challenge not only to introduce those measures, but also to resource them properly. So yeah. as we saw such a significant increase in customer demand for, for support during that period, there was a fairly rapid need within the business to deploy colleagues and train colleagues to, to get support those customers. Um, and then other challenges across the wider market. So clearly as the lockdown took hold within the UK economy, value has stopped going out and value in properties, which made it a, a real challenge for us to be able to keep our, our products available on the market. And it was an interesting interesting kind of internal challenge, I think, for, for me, Dale, when we think about, do, do you keep your products available and kind of hope that those valuations will come back soon and we'll be able to kind of pick those applications up and progress them? Or do we kind of put a line in the sand and, and close the doors temporarily, which we ultimately chose to do, yeah. um, wait for those valuation valuations to return? So that was a, a challenging decision for me because you want to keep your products available at, at all times. But ultimately, I think it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, and, and during that period, we worked closely with a number of partners to make sure that we were bringing alternative solutions available then. So um, that, that was a big challenge, closing the doors, but mid mid-May we were able to reopen the doors with just our clear range because we got some uh, ABM functionality running through the business for the first time which was, which was great um, and then beginning of June we brought back our full product suite so all five credit tiers um, that we had available pre, pre-lockdown pre uh, and now we're back out, back out in the market again so it's been a fascinating period Lot, lots of challenges um, lots of learning opportunities within it as well uh, but it feels as though we are not that we're coming out of the COVID-19 period that as with the market uh, and the business is getting kind of used to that new normal, um, I think we're coming out of it in a very strong position. So sure. I think, you know, it's credit to you guys. You've done really, really well. Um, you were our top lender for the last month, which was fantastic. Um, Great, thanks for your support. Thanks we for your had support. some really good um, ex- products with you guys, um, which has worked really, really well, and the team really enjoyed the relationship. Um, but I've got to ask a question. You know, we're all worried about um, a second spike. We're worried about liquidity. How is your funding? Um, where where are the challenges for someone like yourself as a non-bank lender? Where, where you know, what's what's your what's your issues at the moment? Yeah, uh, and, it, and it's a great question. Challenge uh, funding has always been a going to be a challenge for non-bank lenders in a period like this. Um, from and you know we've seen a range of lenders react differently to some of those liquidity challenges that exist within the marketplace um, at the moment. From, from our perspective, we have a, a very diverse range of funding solutions available to the business. So we, we have very strong funding capacity um, as we sit here today through, you know, without, without going into too much detail, through a range of different funding mechanisms that put us in a very strong position. And we're very comfortable that we can maintain the current volumes that we're doing, um, which as you've already mentioned, we were your biggest lender last month. We're doing record breaking, literally record breaking volumes at the moment, which is great, great support from the broker communities generally. And we're very well placed to facilitate that. Yeah, that's really good. Um, and like I said, let's just talk about products for a second. Our, our biggest product, without without doubt, at the moment is the help to buy. Um, what made you go down that route? Because obviously, it's a very specialist niche area. Um, yeah, it's obviously highly in demand at the moment, and will be to to the end of the year at least. Um, and what you know, what's, what did you pick that specific sector? Yeah, great, great question, great question, Dale. So we joined, joined, entered that market a couple of years ago. 
Um, uh, and I have to say, if we, you know, we, we, we always thought there was a strong opportunity for a specialist lender like Bluestone to enter the help to buy market. At the time we did it, um, there weren't that many specialist lenders playing, playing in that space. Um, we, you know, the philosophy that runs for our business is all about making financial services and financial solutions available to customers who can't get mortgages on the high street. And that helped to buy space in the new build space felt like a real gap in terms of our, our proposition at that time. Um, broker feedback as we started to go out and research the opportunities that existed for us in that help to buy space was very strong. Um, and it's fair to say that right from the day that we launched that product, we've been absolutely delighted with the volumes of business that we've had in on, on help to buy. So it's a significant part of our, of our product proposition now. Um, and we expect that will continue as we move forward within the constraints of the, the scheme. Yeah, and I think it will carry on for a long time, yeah, because people now coming out of furlough, coming out of redundancies and so on and so on, and they'll be looking at downsizing, upsizing, and, you know, they will have the odd blip here or there, and, and that's an ideal product. Absolutely, yeah, agree. I was just going to say, the first indications are, I'd, I'd actually echo that in terms of if we look at the help to buy volumes we're seeing post-lockdown, um, they're, they're very strong, very strong. So we're seeing a strong appetite, as you say, for, for that business, even in the current current environment. Yeah, and it's a great product and it helps people. You know, people, people need the help right now. Um, which also brings me on to the adverse side. Um, you know, we don't have, we, there are some lenders that aren't lending in the market at the moment that have left a rather a large gap. Um, you, you look at people who have had credit blips and, and the odd um, history, credit history error. Um, is that something that you're going to look even more into or are you quite happy with where you're, you're sat at the moment? Uh, another great question. So I think as we sit here at the moment, I'm happy with the product proposition that we have on the market. You know, I've talked about we're doing great volumes. We're very keen to balance um, the solutions that we offer uh, both to brokers and customers. So from a customer perspective, we've got some strong product offerings there at the moment. We're very passionate about making sure the service levels we deliver to brokers, just like yourselves, are also uh, market leading and deliver a great experience for you. The challenge would be, I think, is we, if we expanded the product range currently before we've operationally resourced the business, then we want to kind of balance those two priorities side by side. Yeah. But absolutely, um, we have strong growth plans. So as we, as we sit here now and we look over the next 12 and 18 months, the business wants to grow strongly. I'm confident the business will grow strongly. Um, and we have some exciting plans in terms of new products that we want to bring to market to help support, support that growth. Great, and we really enjoy the relationship, especially with the, the exclusive Sapphire range that we have through Impact. So uh, if you want to find out more about those, obviously give us a call. And Dave, do you think that um, moving forward, the high street lenders will look at coming a bit more into the specialist lending arena? You know, some, some people define specialist lending as buy to lets, which obviously we don't, it's a lot more complex than that. But do you see that as something that, of a challenge to you, maybe in a, in a year's time or so? Uh, a year's time difficult. I think if we look at the short term, um, I don't see I don't see the high street coming to play in what I would class as the complex credit market, which is where Bluestone kind of really really has the strength. Um, I mean, it's fascinating. I think as we come out of COVID nineteen, we see people coming out of furlough, redundancies increasing, and so on and so forth. There's clearly going to be an increased need for specialist lending generally. And I think if we look at the complex credit element of that specialist lending arena, then equally there has inevitably been a number of customers and a range of customers who will have faced some challenges during this period um, of COVID-19. And I think it's going to be very difficult for mainstream lenders who have automated decision-making processes and relatively automated lending processes in terms of how they process their applications to be able to identify which of those customers are COVID-19 related from a, from uh, a credit performance perspective and which aren't, um, and therefore, differentiate their lending decisions as a consequence of that. I may be proved wrong, but I'll be surprised if they if they come and play aggressively in, in the complex credit market. Sure. And at the moment, as it stands, just to throw a question and put you right on the spot, um, as it stands, about 75% of all mortgages are done through brokers. What do you think that percentage will be in, in 12 months? I, I, I absolutely think that will say the same and increase. So from our perspective, we're working hard to, we're working hard with brokers actually to help them to capitalize on the opportunities that I've just mentioned. So. You know, if I'm a betting man, absolutely, I think the specialist market will grow. I'm certain the complex credit market will grow. And the important thing is, as an intermediary lender like ourselves, it's important that we work with brokers and intermediaries to make sure that they're skilled and confident to support customers with those type of uh, non-vanilla, as they're often branded, um, cases. So there's a huge focus in our business to make sure that we're supporting the market generally to understand the solutions that are available for those customers. 
It's good to hear. Um, also, you're well known in the market for technology and um, you've spent a lot of money over the years on, on getting your system to bombard us with case updates, which is brilliant because you know we need, we need to be case updated so we can inform our brokers exactly the same. Um, have you got everything to where you want it to be with technology? Are you spending, are you going to be spending a lot of money um, over the next 12 months to continue that? Is it doing everything you want it to do? Uh, so knowledge is power. So I'm glad you're enjoying your, your case updates today on knowledge is power. Um, so I think um, from a technology perspective, you're absolutely right. So technology has been a major focus within, within Bluestone over the last couple of years. We've developed our own platform. We've integrated open banking. We've looked at API links. Um, are we at the end of that journey? Absolutely not. So I think they, there may be um, an extension of the roadmap from a technology perspective as we, as we kind of work our way through the market that we're, we're currently operating in. Um, but that, that technology focus within Bluestone will, will, will never disappear. So I think um, anything that we can do to provide you guys and brokers generally with an improved experience through advanced uh, use of technology, we will absolutely wrap our arms around and, and try and capitalize on. So um, yeah, we have, a, we have a, in the same way as we have a product development roadmap, we have a technology development roadmap um, and, you'll, and you'll see some developments as we, as we move forward. Brilliant. That sounds really good. Do you think technology is doing as it should do, though, or is there a lot of talk and a lot of noise at the moment in the marketplace that you know is is making it the the actual outcome a bit more foggy than it should be? And is it is it right that there's so much noise, you know, rather than people actually just getting on with it and fifteen people trying to do one thing when maybe it could be done and condensed with two or three companies just providing the right information for the lenders and the brokers? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And we, and we actually saw some real strengths in that. I think so. Um, at the start of this COVID period, there's some great examples of where some platforms have come together to provide holistic, almost market overviews of changes that are taking place by lenders and utilizing their technology platforms to make that information broadly available to brokers. So rather than brokers having to go off into multiple different reference points, uh, there's, a, there's been a number of one-stop shops effectively to help them to, to gather that information. Um, not, not quite where you were taking the question, but a good example of how technology can be utilized to, to support brokers. Um, I think you're right. There's, a, there's often a lot of dialogue in the industry around this almost um, ultimate goal of what technology might look like in the move, in, in, in the future. Um, I think cohesion between between lenders uh, outside of API platforms like um, RMS, for example, will always will always be a challenge. Um, and I think the challenge for lenders is prioritising the development resource that they need to deliver those technology improvements alongside other priorities within within their businesses. Um, but do, do I think it's where it, where it could be? No. Do we, uh, do we have exciting plans from a technology point of view? Absolutely. Um, but they'll always be balanced alongside the priorities of growing, growing a business more generally, I think is, the, is my get out of jail card. No, it's, it's a good, good, a good answer, that one. Um, so um, what's your thoughts for the, the rest of 2020 with regards to volumes? We're obviously all very worried about a second spike um, and there's certain pockets and we're, we're just at the start of August for this um, for the purposes of this recording. There's certain yeah. pockets then now to where there are areas being shut down and valuers won't be able to go and value properties and so on and so on. Um, how much do you think this will impact the current volumes that are obviously going through the roof at the moment and in, in the sustainability of, of where we're at today? Yeah, limited. I mean, we've got our own contingency plans. So I referenced earlier in the in the session around the deployment of ABMs um, to help overcome some of those restrictions around or risks around value has not been able to go out and value properties. So at the moment, that's still on a relatively limited part of our product proposition. Um, but I hope that we will be in a position to extend that um, as we move forward. Um, and I think if we can have a, a broader use of ABMs across, uh, across the wider product range, that will help us to mitigate that risk of a lockdown, which then prevents those valuations being completed. We've seen a huge transition, I think, in the advice process from, from brokers to sessions just like this, where you've got a broker at one end of a VC talking to a customer at the other, at the other end of a VC yeah. Um, yeah. and facilitating that financial advice process um, through this new virtual world that we're all getting very used to living in. So if the front end of the process can still be accommodated and the lenders can still operate, which we're, we're fully operational within this period while we're working from home, and we can still facilitate valuations and, and release the funds, I think the impact will be limited and we're very, we're very supportive of what we're seeing from the government in terms of their very precise and quick action to kind of lock down uh, certain areas rather than allowing any kind of spread of that of the, uh, uh, and reducing the risk of any kind of second, second phase that affects the market more generally. Yeah, sure. 
And what would you, what would your advice be to brokers right now, especially those that haven't been in a specialist lending area, um, with regards to you know learning, um, looking at this area, looking for those sort of clients? What would your advice? Be? Well, my my first advice is jump into it because I love it. I absolutely love it. I've been in this market for a couple of years now, uh, and I have to say I absolutely love it. And I mean, I'm really passionate about that. Um, a little story for you. I woke up this morning. First thing I saw on LinkedIn was some feedback about, about Bluestone, where a broker had written that um, they'd just spoken to their customer who had started to cry when they were given the news that they'd had their mortgage offer from Bluestone because Brilliant. they'd been messed around by such a degree from other lenders in terms of not not uh, not being prepared to lend. And taking that taking that uh, and seeing the value in what we do as a business is really passionate from from my perspective. Um, and I think that's that's exactly where the specialist lending market comes into play, right? So we we facilitate for solutions for customers who are passionate about their own dreams but can't facilitate those dreams on the high street. And those those that cohort of customers will grow. Uh, absolutely confident about that. Um, and as a broker, I would absolutely encourage everybody to capitalise on that opportunity um, over the course of the coming months. No, fair play. That's a really good good response. And you've been um, MD of Bluestone for a while now. Um, is it um, going in, not going in the right direction, but is, how, how far to your ambition are you with regards to where you want to, where you want to take it? Yeah, so, so we're making great progress, no, no doubt about it. We were, and you know, I started this interview talking about the fact we've moved into new offices. So you know, I've been, I've been MD of Bluestone for pretty much bang on 12 months now. Um, we, were, we, were, we were making that change um, of office because we needed to double our capacity. We needed to double the capacity because of the fact that the business was growing at such a strong pace. Um, now clearly COVID-19 has come along and perhaps uh, put the brakes a tad on uh, the, those growth plans and, and stalled us a little, but you know, the, the speed of recovery that we're currently seeing um, and the growth I just talked about, the expected growth I just talked about in the marketplace means I'm confident that we will soon get back on track in terms of, in terms of the roadmap that we have for, for growth. Um, I've talked about some product development plans. They're absolutely within my, my roadmap in terms of where I want to take the business as well. You know, I, I won't rest until Bluestone is the, um, the most favoured specialist lender from, from brokers in the marketplace and well regarded and respected for taking that holistic, independent view um, of customer circumstances and, and how we can help. Um, and we're starting to see that come to life. I don't, I don't know if you look at the lender benchmark survey, um, but we, we were ranked top in that for the first six months of this year in the specialist lending market. Um, and actually we verbatim commentary was great because the verbatim commentary from brokers was all about the real strength of Bluestone being that underwriters and our sales team will take the time to sit back, listen, and objectively look at individual circumstances and find a way to uh, support those customers. And that, that is exactly what we're, we're here to do. I think that's the end goal for everybody, isn't it? The customer. You know, some people do forget, but there is a customer at the end of everything that we do, whether it be through Impact or a broker or yourself. Um, you know, we've got the customer's interest at heart. So just so we get to know you a little bit better in the lockdown, have you had any time to create any new hobbies or take up any new hobbies or a box set of choice? <laughs> uh, uh, hobbies, no, not really. Um, but I have been getting into Netflix. So if you haven't watched them, uh, Caliphate, Absolutely fascinating on, on Netflix, really interesting. And there was another one which I'm struggling to remember now. Um, unorthodox, unorthodox. So both really, really fascinating, fascinating programs on Netflix. So um, I tried to box set and perhaps moved on a bit. I get bored too quickly, I think it's my problem. <laughs> Look, Steve, I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope you enjoyed um, watching. Um, please tune in next time for our next Impact Insights. In the meantime, anything with regards to Bluestone, give our team a call and we will see what we can do for you. Many thanks for watching. Stay safe. Keep well.